I don't believe any of us are going to escape this back stream. Look at Austria today. Full national lockdown until the 13th of December. Then in February, mandatory vaccination. The opposition leader has called Austria a dictatorship. And it is really, isn't it? It's unconstitutional. If you haven't heard of the 2G rule in Austria, this is what it is. For hotels, restaurants, bars, nightclubs, etc. We can't wait from the virus is mandatory. For events with 25 people or more, proof of vaccination or recovery is mandatory. Covid tests, the PCR and the antigen tests are no longer valid as entry tests. This is going to be coming here, mark my words. Masks are required on public transport and in all retail businesses and museums. Two dose vaccinations are valid for nine months only after the second dose from the 6th of December. Previously it was 12 months. After that, a booster jab is required for valid proof of full vaccination. Attention, the one dose vaccine by Johnson & Johnson is only valid until the 3rd of January 2022. After that date, a booster jab is required as well. Up until the 6th of December, proof of the first dose plus a negative PCR test is valid for hospitality businesses body related services and events and children under 12 are exempt and it says they'll provide more information when it becomes available as I said before this is not going to stay in Austria let me show you this this is from this is live these are from today and this is about Austria overall since the pandemic started there have been 11,951 deaths during this last wave as they call it there are currently 138,841 people infected that's 99.6 percent of all cases are mild only 520 which equates to 0.4 percent are serious or critical national lockdown and mandatory vaccinations for 520 serious or critical people as far as I can see, there haven't even been any deaths this time. I was suspicious today. I was looking at the government websites and I do that frequently. I look at the new legis legislation and any new pages that have popped up. And I noticed this one and it's about how to apply for and receive your COVID pass for medical exemption. But I thought, why would you need one if it's not compulsory to have the vaccine? Maybe it's because it will be compulsory to have it. As I was reading down, I noticed at the bottom it said that there'd be no difference. People wouldn't be able to tell if you've been vaccinated or if you were medically exempt. That raises the question, is it about infection or is it about having some form of identification? Because say I'm lucky and I get the exemption certificate, I could have COVID and travel abroad like a vaccinated person and potentially spread it because you don't do the tests now, they, they're defunct. It's not about infection, is it? It's about having some kind of documentation. In 2018, I was diagnosed with cancer. It was only stage one, grade one. I had, I had a hysterectomy, but you're always living with that threat of it coming back and finishing you off. And I was really not looking forward to missing out on life. That was my main gripe about the, the possibility that I would be dead soon. Now, I couldn't care less because what kind of life do we have? I go food shopping every day. I make myself go out every day, but I don't have a life. I used to take about eight holidays a year. I mean, not all fortnight breaks, a couple of weekends here and weekends there, but at least we're able to do that. And now we've had a couple of trips to the South Coast. It's very nice down there, but it, you know, it's not my week in Croatia that I did in 2019 for my birthday this year. We went to Portsmouth and Fairham. I wouldn't be missing out on anything. As you probably know yourselves, there are so many inconsistencies in the COVID story. For example, we'd only just started the vaccine rollout in December last year over here in Britain, when in February, there was the first mention of a booster vaccine. Now, how could they know that we would need a booster vaccine when the vaccine rollout has only just begun? It says mentions of the COVID-19 booster campaign have been floated in government documents since February 21. 
But now that Savid Javid, who replaced Matt Hancock as the Health and Social Care Secretary at the end of June, pushes the UK towards learning to live with the virus, the plans are starting to take shape. So the inconsistency there, if we were being pushed towards learning to live with the virus, then why on earth would anyone need a booster vaccine? And the booster vaccine was probably already in trials before February. And the article continues, however, many uncertainties remain. Data are still being collected on how long immunity lasts following the first two doses. And clinical trials to find out which vaccine works best as a booster jab and whether it can be administered at the same time as a flu jab are ongoing. So it says here itself, there are many uncertainties still about the original vaccines. So why would you produce a third one when you don't know how the first two work? I was under the impression that a booster was after you'd had the first two, but according to this article in thelocal.com, I was wrong because in Austria, it says they're recommending the third dose of the COVID vaccine to everybody to compensate for the country's low vaccine uptake. So they're offering it to everyone, not just the people who've had the first and the second jab, but those who haven't had it at all. But in Britain, the rules appear to be a little bit different. Third or booster jabs are being offered to people across the UK who are aged 40 or over and it says also those who are clinically extremely vulnerable have been offered it. This is because studies have shown that immunity offered by the first two doses of the COVID vaccine starts to reduce after six months. So why in Austria are they offering it to everybody? Surely those who haven't had the first two but get the third will need another two or am I wrong the see between the two countries there are a vast difference in what this third or booster vaccine does I don't know if it's because I'm quite pedantic when it comes to language but I understand a third jab to be in conjunction with the first two so like a set of books you have a trilogy but the booster one well it does what it says it boosts what you've had before so in the book analogy, it can be like the background to the trilogy. I don't understand why people in Austria can have just one, which is the third one, when in Britain, it's if you've had the first two. The confusion continues. In September, there was this article in Today, and it's regarding the, the booster and the third vaccine in America. It says, I want to differentiate here between a third dose and a booster dose, Ban said, is the Walgreens chief medical officer. If you're immunocompromised, if your immune system doesn't do the job that it usually should, usually because you have a medical condition or, or are on certain medications, what we saw is that after two doses for Pfizer and Moderna, after one dose for J&J, &J, there just wasn't an adequate enough immune response. And so those people need a third dose. They need a third dose to get the immunity to the level where it will protect, which is very different than a booster dose. So here we've got in America potentially having four vaccines, three of the set and an extra one to give you a bit of a lift. In order to clear things up, I had to look at what the World Health Organization had to say on the matter. And it looks as if the Austrian government is guilty of medical misinformation because according to who you have to have the first two in order to have the third as it undermines the principle of it global equity that's what it says here so why is Austria saying that everyone can have just the third vaccine it looks very much as if Germany is going to follow Austria's lead in total national lockdown and the interesting part is it says vaccinations alone will not cut case numbers. The writing's on the wall really, isn't it? We've been coerced, we've been threatened, we've had our freedoms taken away and still approximately one third of the population has held out and not had a vaccine. Now they've got to up the ante. They're going to have to make it compulsory everywhere. In Austria, I was trying to find the information about the punishment if people still refused. Will they go to prison? 
will they be fined or will someone come round to their accommodation on this? It'll be interesting to see what does happen after the 1st of February when um, the poor Austrians are subjected to something they should never be subjected to.